It's a great day. My name is Jay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we are on a mission. And our mission really is to empower. Our mission is to inspire. And our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Rashida Frazier. She's in the building. She was talking about foundational strategies for business success. It's more than just business. What's going on, Rashida? How are you? I'm doing good, Che. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. It's great to be here with you today. I'm super excited. We're talking about foundational strategies for business success. My question is why, from your view of the world, are businesses still struggling to be profitable and to grow and have the impact they were planning to have in the world when they first got started? What's holding them back these days? Themselves. Mm. That's one of the biggest things that I see when I encounter new entrepreneurs, when I encounter uh, new businesses, when I encounter existing businesses that are in the market to scale and shift, a lot of it comes from themselves. It's fear. A lot of people are stuck in a comfort zone. And also a lot of people don't necessarily know um, how to get out of their own way. So that's why I always fear, people, fear, fear mm. of your success fear of making it, fear of um, getting to the next level and not knowing how, fear of thinking they always have to do it alone. So mm. it's a now lot what do you, of What do you say to the person who's listening saying, she's spot on, Shay, that's me. Now we're going to talk to the rest of y'all who think it's not you. And they're saying, okay, Shay, I'm raising my hand. Um, before she even gets started, can she share one or two ideas that can help me kind of, and it's a loaded question, but can help me kind of move from fear so I can, I can kind of get out of my own way because I heard what I need to hear. I have been holding myself back. What would you say to that person that's listening now? Personal development. I think mm. that um, a lot of people don't invest in personal and professional development. Uh, they try to forge ahead with what they think they know. Uh, we live in a DIY culture where everybody thinks they could just log on to YouTube University or uh you know, Google University and get the answer, uh, but not necessarily know how to apply it. But when you actually go and get professional and personal development, right? Thinking about the things that uh, you need to do to better yourself, right? So is it a mindset issue? Is it a fear of money? A lot of people have to heal their relationship with money in order to be able to successfully make money. A lot of times, as soon as they see a certain dollar amount, they get fearful that impedes them from the success that they can have in their business, or they may have a fear of numbers. So it impedes them from doing things that will generate larger numbers because they're scared of the little bit of numbers that they see in front of them. These are very real things that a lot of entrepreneurs go through. And, and to the other person that. saying, this is, this is good. Okay, Shay, I'll I have you unpack that in a moment. Uh, I'm on the other side, Shay, when she talks about foundational strategies, um, is there anything else that she would add to that? Because you kind of cut her off. You just jumped in and said, wait a minute, someone has fear. Okay. Um, what are some of the foundational strategies that, that are holding folks um, back um, that are listening right now? They're like, okay, I can get over fear, but I'm, I'm ready to build this business. Like I'm, I'm all in. Lack of structure, right? A lot of people jump feet first. They don't build out the plan. They don't build out the business plan. They do not have a strategy. They do not know their numbers. They just know that I've got a great product and or service and I am enthusiastic about this product and or service. So I'm gonna get out there and start selling this product and or service without realizing that there's a whole business foundational component that they need to help drive that enthusiasm. And it's the not so sexy part of business. It, but it's the most necessary part of it. And for those people who claim I'm ready, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to move, right? I, I've got it, this is it. This is my million dollar golden ticket, right? Uh, a lot of times they are not structured and ready to take those leaps and bounds um, because once the money starts coming in, the infrastructure is not set. So then they fail because there's nothing to hold it up. 
Mm. So you've got all of this greatness coming in, but not not a strong enough foundation to hold it together to keep it moving and to keep it flowing. They're listening to you, and I, I kind of got started, which I do sometime, and jumped right into it. And they might be wondering, can Rashida slow down? And don't worry, we're going to come back. She's going to give you all these two, three, or four, or five strategies that are going to help you. Um, but can she please slow down and tell us her backstory? Can we understand who this person is? Um, what was her defining moment? And why is she so passionate about helping business owners be able to grow and be profitable? Uh, backstory. I grew up in Bronx, New York, and I grew up on Cedric Avenue. And if anybody knows 1520 Cedric Avenue, it is a block that starts from an underpass of a highway and then goes down either toward the Major Deegan Expressway or in the opposite direction, further down Cedric Avenue. There was one store on our whole block before you got to the next block would to get to another store and or if you couldn't find what you needed at that local store you had to go up a hill and the hill was long and steep to get to the next store and if you didn't take the long roundabout way you had to walk up not one not two but at least three flights of very long stairs get to the top of the stairs walk down a hill on the side of the projects to get to another store. I lived in an economic desert and a lot of people don't think that uh, when they think of the Bronx or they think of certain areas, um, it's like, wait a minute, there are stores there, but you have to travel so far to get to them, right? There weren't a lot of services and or resources. If you didn't have a car, I didn't have a car, this was a two for a zone. If you were either on your feet, you were walking to the nearest train station, the nearest train station was at least three miles. So if you didn't take a bus, you had to walk. So when I think about how I grew up, when I think about what my parents had to do to take care of six of us, because I have five sisters, um, and I think about what others had to go through within the neighborhoods, just as consumers, to be able to take care of their families, as a young child, that stuck with me. And as I began to grow older and get into my own world of business, of working, of being a parent, you know, and a wife, uh, and looking at what I wanted to do to build my family up, I started to notice this same pattern across New York in certain areas within the boroughs. And I started to travel and I started to see that it just wasn't specific to New York. And it was almost this defining moment of we have to do something about creating businesses so that people don't have to move too far to get what they need. And my defining moment um, really started when I started to mentor. Uh, in high school, right? I started to mentor mm -hmm. high school students, getting them ready for college. And a lot of them said, I don't want to go to college. And I said, why? And they said, I want to work for myself. I want to get my own business. And that was my aha moment because I said, ooh. So I said, well, what do you know about entrepreneurship? What do you know about business ownership? And they knew nothing. So it was a great opportunity for me to begin to teach. And that eventually turned into their parents saying, hey, uh, my son or daughter came home and told me about this. And by the way, I have this idea. Can I talk to you? And I realized that uh, they needed to grow and learn and be empowered. And they wanted to be around owning businesses. Um, it was a lot of just a lot of that energy. And I sat down one day with a really good friend of mine and uh, I said, hey, I, I have this idea. Um, I've been teaching, I've been mentoring, I've been kind of doing this thing for free. I think I want to start a business and help people structure and grow viable businesses within their communities, especially underserved communities. And that's literally how it started. And Empowering Greatness was birthed. And here you are, Empowering Greatness. Greatness means different things to different people. Yes. Uh, what is your definition of, of greatness? And what does that look like for a business owner? My definition of greatness is anything that is outside of 
what is expected of you. Mm. And I say that because we are marred down with limitations on what we're expected to achieve. And that idea, that passion that you have, if you can execute that, that is your greatness. So it's, it's different for each person, right? It's not just a flat. So your greatness, Shay, is, you know, the things that you're doing with this podcast and giving avenues for people to speak, that's greatness. And you're mm -hmm. empowering someone's greatness by allowing them access to your platform. My empowering of greatness is to take those innate passions that actually are viable and make sense within a business context and to actually help people move them to where they can grow and blossom. But as a result of that, and ladies, I want you to listen, gentlemen, I want you to listen very closely. She's she's the innovator of something called the greatness factor. And uh, this is an approach that can help you. Now, I'm going to ask her just to peel back the big black curtain just a little bit, okay? And and, and kind of reach into her treasure chest of secrets down there and then come back out and say, okay, um, here's what the greatness factor is. Uh, here's how it works at, at, at its highest level possible. And this is something that's unique to her. So obviously we want the, I know you can't do it justice, but give us the one minute backstory to the greatness factor. How'd you come up with the greatness factor? And then how can it help the business owner today, the mom, the dad, um, the uncle, the brother, the person that might be listening right now with a lot of responsibilities, but at the end of the day, they're an entrepreneur and they're tuned in right now. So the greatness factor comes from within. And I developed that when I realized that a lot of people didn't know exactly who they were and they didn't know how to tap into the greatness that was inside. So I developed this technique where we actually use meditation to be mm. at the beginning of our process to begin to peel back the layers of fear, of worry, of grief, of things that are blocking us in order to get to that point where we can then see ourselves as the capable individuals that we are following our passion and our path. So it really starts with this very holistic approach to the person and the individual. Because remember, one of the first things I said was that the biggest thing outside of socioeconomic things that are, of course, always uh, blockers to uh, certain businesses, the biggest thing really is, is us, is the person, that we block ourselves from our ability to be great. So the greatness factor taps into the person and helps to remove a lot of the things that they don't realize are blocking them in order for them to shift and change that mindset and then move to the next level within their business growth and development. And are the affirmations, thanks for sharing, by the way, are the affirmations, are there, are there thoughts or ideas that you feed your mind or you recommend to your clients um, that they feed their mind to shift their mindset? And if you're, if you're listening right now, I want you to go, oh, here we go again, Shay, the mindset thing. No, no, this is very important. Now, I know some of you, you're, you're, you're wired, you're, you're leaning forward. You're like, look, I can mm -hmm. always get better. And some of you might be thinking, ah, I think I've heard some of this. I want you to listen with new ears right now. I want you to kind of watch her with new eyes because this could be the one missing piece you need in your business foundation that you can make it just a little bit better and it moves the needle all the way. Some things you do is just a little teeny move. And other times yeah. you make this little teeny move and it shifts the whole business. So take a moment, maybe share maybe some affirmations or gratitude or thoughts that you share with business owners to help empower them so they can step into their greatness. So one of the things that I help each entrepreneur do is develop an affirmation that is going to move them because all affirmations are not universal. Each person has their own unique issues that they're dealing with, their own unique challenges. So it's a four part system where we start off with what the issue is, right? So we figure out what that issue is that is impeding them, that that fear factor or whatever that behavior that they need to get rid of. Then we do a visualization, right? And we say, hey, let's visualize ourselves doing the exact opposite and seeing the success, right? All of this is, we script this, but it's all done in meditation, right? Because that's where the transformation really happens. And within that, then there's usually an affirmation or a truism of sorts that speaks to the change that you are, 
right? So um, I am a peaceful, um, I am at peace in challenges where um, I have to make a decision as a CEO that is going to affect the pay of a hundred of my employees, right? Some people, that's a fear factor. I can't pay my employees. I see myself laughing. I see myself joyful being able to sign the checks that are now going to not only help my employees, but their families, right? I am enjoying this moment as I'm able to press the button and see all the direct deposits go through and hit everybody's bank account on time. Right? I make it specific to what it is. And that visual with that affirmation and that declaration of being at peace and holding on to the fact that I can be joyful even in the most stressful of situations, because that situation could be stressful to certain entrepreneurs depending on their why for why they do what they do in their specific business. And then I tie that into a reward. What is the reward that you want to see at the end because you're maintaining your peace and your joy. You're not acting like you normally would. You're visualizing yourself acting in a totally different way, right? A way that is conducive of you being successful and you being able to execute your goals and your plan. What is that thing that you need the most? I need more clients. I need more money. I need, uh, you know, to be debt-free. Uh, you know, I need my business generating, you know, seven extra figures by, you know, in the next three to five years, whatever that is. And I tell them, see yourself getting that. You know, I want to be on more speaking uh, stages and sharing what I do. I want to write books and be a best selling author. Whatever that tangible takeaway is, I tie that in as well. And that is a part of each session that I do with my clients in addition to all the basic business foundational things that need to happen around strategy, around operations, around standard operating procedures, around finance, around HR, around retention. So we don't take any of those out. We're just adding this component in. And it's a very holistic approach to business, but I have found it wildly successful with a lot of my clients. And that's a perfect segue as you were talking about that into a segment we have here called Today is My January 1st, especially as you're being transparent, you're being authentic. Ladies and gentlemen, she's giving you exactly what you need right now, the foundation for which to grow your business. And we have a segment here, by the way, Rashida, called Today is My January 1st. Now, for those Ooh. folks who tune in every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know what we're about to do. You can even say those magical words, Today is my January 1st. I never get tired of saying that, by the way. And for those folks that wonder, what is Shay saying? Today is my January 1st is our personal mantra. It represents a fresh start. It represents a do over. Today is our January 1st means our past. No matter how dark and gloomy that past is or how, how bright and sunny that past is, the past no longer equals our future. And so my question to you, Vashid, is you sit on the other side, is really two parts. Number one, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And number two, what was the setback you had? Maybe your life isn't perfect. Maybe she's always been a part of greatness, ladies and gentlemen. We'll find out. Your life has been just so perfect. Yeah. But was there a time there was a setback? There was a struggle. And how did you bounce back from it? Um, what do I think about when I hear my January 1st is? Um, I honestly think about renewal. I think about... Uh, this is the time to really go within and plant the seeds of change and execute on it, right? Because a lot of times we hear January 1st, we hear, you know, it's a new year, it's a new resolution, um, but then a week later it's dead in the water. <laughs> we don't execute on it. So when I think about renewal, I think about the winter, I think about what's coming, I think about the new year. Um, I think about execution. What am I going to do to truly execute on this thing that I know I want to change, to make it sink, to make it fit so that I can reach my goals? Because I realize that if I keep doing this, I will never 
ever, ever, ever move the needle the way that I need to. So that's what I think about when I think about January 1. Today is my January 1, so I am going to do everything that I can to move forward. And as far as setbacks, oh, I have failed and failed miserably over the years. Oh, absolutely. Um, I am a multi-entrepreneur. I have tried every business from network marketing to affiliate marketing to sales to you name it. I think I've done it. Uh, travel, <laughs> uh, everything. And I couldn't, I couldn't find that that thing, right? I worked full time while I was trying to start and grow businesses and learn and do so many things for decades. And I felt miserably. I wasn't making any money. I, I wasn't even structured correctly. As much as I knew, I had to, re I realized that I had to become my first client. What's that old commercial? I'm not only the hair club president, I'm also a client. Yeah. I, yeah. I know I might be dating myself, but hey, it's okay. Um, I had to become a client because everything that I work with and I teach people now and that I've been doing for the past uh, decade and a half, I got to tell you, is because I've lived it. I have been unstructured. I have blocked myself from many a blessings because I was scared to move, because I was scared to win, because I was scared to actually put myself out there and be seen. Um, as structured and as organized as I was, that fear kept me uh, very much in organizational chaos. So I didn't know my left from my right. If you asked me what my numbers are back then, I couldn't tell you. If you asked me what I sold, I stumbled over my words. I couldn't even say what it was. Um, and yeah, I wasted a lot of time and a lot of money, but I learned a lot in the, on the process. And I got better at it because I didn't give up. Ah, I like it. Better because you didn't give up. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes someone look at you, they think you got everything perfect. They're like, look at her, Shay. She looks amazing. Life is good. So thanks for letting us know that, no, there were some setbacks. There, there were some different uh, journeys along the way. We might be looking at chapter 20, but there's about 19 chapters ahead of that. But, <laughs> <You got that's laughs> right. um, but, but as you're out there now, one of my favorite questions I like to ask, especially when I get time is, uh, what's one of the best pieces of advice that you've ever been given and, and the audience just so they know for those folks that are new that you know she's had a lot of mentors along this journey she's read i'm sure she i can't remember how many books i read these days or how many videos i've watched <laughs> and i mean it's just it's countless hours now um my question to you what's one of the best pieces of advice you had to reach out and grab that you've ever been given that you just want to share with the audience and why um it was run your own race and don't worry about anybody else because your life is your life and their life is theirs. And your success is gonna happen when it's your time and nobody else can dictate that but you and God. And my mother told me that. She looked me in my face and she said, before she passed away, this is what I gift to you. I gift this to you because I see your greatness. I see in you everything that you put in everybody else. And she said, Rashida, run your race and don't give up. Put the blinders on and keep running because you're always going to hear naysayers on this side and naysayers on that side. It's always going to be something that's going to happen. Life, what is the new term? Life is lifing. Life is always going to life. Life is happening all the time. But if you are focused on your end goal, then just go along the journey. Just keep trotting along. Just keep persevering through. And I always hear her when obstacles come up, when adversity comes up, just reminding me to head down blinders on, run your race, Rashida. It's okay. Because when it's your time, it's your time. And nothing will be able to stop you from crossing that finish line. Mm -hmm. I love it. What do you do for fun? We're not out helping businesses grow, be financially stable and be profitable. What do you do for fun these days? I hang out. I travel. Um, I garden. Okay. I actually have a green thumb. So I love to grow food. 
herbs, all kind of stuff. And being that I live in the city, I have an indoor urban garden right in my apartment. What's, what's one of the lessons you've learned just from gardening? I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you lit up like a tree bubble over here. You're like, yes, I garden. I mean, you're like a yes. self-proclaimed, I got a green thumb. I don't care what everybody says in my family. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a green thumb. You have a green thumb. Um, but but what's, what's one of the lessons that you've learned just from gardening that is maybe applicable to life? Uh, peace is a real thing. Mm. And, and that's real because when you're planting and when you're gardening, you can't go fast. You have to take care of the seed. You have to take care of the soil. And there's this level of peace that comes over you when you're just kind of playing in the dirt, when you're uh, planting and tilling and turning things over, when you finally see uh, the fruits of the work, you know, all the watering and everything that you've sown begins to grow. And whenever I'm in that moment, it's so peaceful. It's so reflective. And I realized that sometimes just taking that moment to do something outside of the norm, outside of the busy, just to catch your breath, something that really soothes you is, it's really peaceful. And you, peace is a real thing. And it can be, it can be, uh, achieved and it's something that we can tap into whenever we want to just go play in some dirt or sit down go. <laughs> but for me i'll go play in some dirt <laughs> i love it by the way i love it let me say yeah. thank you so much for being on the happy entrepreneur show before we close people want to know two things two-part question number one what type of clients mm -hmm. are you looking to work with these days if any and number two how can folks best connect with you how can they stay in this conversation over and beyond the time that you and i have now uh, the type of clients that I am looking for are small and mid-sized businesses as well as startups. Um, but here's the caveat. You have to be receptive to want to work and do the work to change whatever it is that is blocking you to push you to the next level. And you can continue this wonderful conversation with me or my social platforms you can reach me on linkedin as rashida frazier it's f-r-a-z-i-e-r and you will notice you will see a lovely picture of me with blue hair so you'll know it's me um and then and that's the best honestly linkedin is the best platform for me i do have an instagram uh page and a facebook page called sheeta solutions s-h-e-e-d-a underscore solutions underscore 2.0 so you can also follow me there i give tips and inspirational uh quotes all the time and just little things for entrepreneurs to think about but you can also dm me there and if you would like to send me an email you can send me an email at rashida at empowergreat.com that's Rashida at EmpowerGreat.com. And my website is www.EmpowerGreat.com. Well, let me say thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. I thank you so much for having me, Shay. And thanks to Tyran for connecting us as well. Outstanding Absolutely. individual. And thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, all the viewers. Without you, there is no show. So we appreciate you being here. We appreciate you showing up. Yes, it's kind of cool. As I would like to say, we hit the like button. That's cool. But hit the share button. That's even better. Like, pay this message forward to another entrepreneur who's doing some really cool stuff in the world. We appreciate that as well. And every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I love to remind you that no matter what you're going through, no matter your challenges, the highs and the lows, that today indeed is your January 1st. You're awesome. Your best is yet to come. And because of just that one reason, I look for greatness from you. I, I like that. And greatness for you. I could, I could, I could be empowering greatness. I had to put greatness in there somehow because that's, that's our thing. <laughs> oh, well, thanks a it. lot. Uh, we appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Rashida. We're out here, everybody. Peace. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.